Hi, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. This week is the one year anniversary of the podcast. So for today's podcast, I'm going to read some of my best advice of the year. Some of the advice are don'ts, things to stay away from, and some of the advice are do's, things you should actually try to get done. That's what we'll talk about today. I listen to everyone, then I do what I want. Diane von Furstenberg. So the first thing is, don't be in a cult. And what that means is, don't think everything that a person says, a particular group says, or that you think yourself is perfect. Make sure you validate everything. Everything that's worthwhile in life can stand up to a bit of scrutiny. Check out what you know. Check out what you think. Check to make sure that the people you're listening to are giving you good advice or good opinions. Don't pretend that you know what other people are thinking. We get into trouble because we think we know what other people think. We're mind readers. We're amazing at it. Not only do we know why our husband didn't go and take out the trash this morning. We have it in our mind. He's just trying to mess with us. Or we think we know what our boss is thinking when they say a statement that confuses us. Instead of just asking them, what did that mean? Whenever you're confronted with something, Never read people's minds. You have no idea what in the world they're even thinking. I see so many people getting offended because they heard a quote, they heard a statement from somebody else, and then they think, wow, that person's a real jerk. You don't really know. Find out more about why it is they're thinking what they're thinking, or maybe give them the latitude that maybe it didn't come out quite like they had planned to say. Don't pretend that you can change other people's minds through your wit or through the best argument, people come to their opinions in very long paths. Sometimes they're raised with certain ideas. Sometimes they came there through experience in their own life. Changing opinions and changing minds is really hard to do. It also means that when someone believes something differently than you do, it doesn't mean that they're a bad person or they got there through a bad path. Just remember that you're pretty sold on your ideas It's great to get away from them and think about other ideas, but it also tends to be very hard for all of us to do. Give people a little bit of grace that you're not going to be able to knock on someone's door and change their opinion. Don't be lazy. It is so easy to be stuck with momentum, whether it's good momentum or bad momentum. If you're sitting there on your chair and you're not going outside because, "Eh, what if it's windy out there or I'm just tired? It's easy to just sit in your chair, stay where you're at. I know for me, the number one hardest thing on the planet is sometimes just getting out of my chair. I joked about how many hobbies I have that are right there in the chair. I like playing on my computer. I like knitting. I like reading. And now I have a podcast. What is that? Sitting. They're all sitting things. I find that when I can just get myself out of the chair and out the door, Suddenly, amazing things happen in my life. So just remember, do whatever it takes to not get into lazy habits and do the thing that you really need to do. Don't quit the right thing to do. Have some grit. It's important that when we know the thing that we're supposed to be doing, the activity we're supposed to take on, the habit we're supposed to break, the exercise we're supposed to do, When we know it's the right thing to do, we need to have that tenacity to go after it, keep doing it, and keep trying it. If we don't go after those things, and if we just decide to quit, those things will either never improve our own lives, will never improve the lives of the people around us, and so we have to make sure we do those things. Don't do everything, or even most things. We do not have enough time, energy, attention, to do all the things that our brain dreams up for us to do. And in fact, I think our brains do it on purpose to make sure that we don't succeed in certain areas. It gives us a way out. Well, I would have lost weight, but I had all these other things I needed to do. I would have been a better parent, but I was super busy and I had to work hard. Make sure that you're not doing everything, that you list all the things that you're doing when it comes to your work or when it comes to your personal life and figure out what is essential. Don't get too comfortable. I think this is somewhat related to being in the chair, right? You're comfortable, you're warm, you're sitting under your favorite blankie. 
But you know what? It's fine to be comfortable and it's fine to be warm under your blankie. But think of it as like dessert. It's the dessert of life, which means we should have a little of it. If you get too comfortable in where you're at in your work or where you're at in your life or where you're at in the chair, it will keep you from the very amazing things in your life that are really important. And even if we can just get out of that comfort zone for a short while, maybe even take on something that's uncomfortable to us, a challenge, an experiment, something that moves the ball forward in our lives, even if we don't feel comfortable about it, we get better and better at it. We feel more and more comfortable at it. And at some point, the very thing that used to be challenging to us is now comfortable to us. That's progress, but that also means you can't stay there either. You keep going. Don't be selfish. It is really easy in this world to listen to the messages about constant self-care, tension to yourself, worrying about where you're at, worrying about what you're doing. But you know what? We live in a very interconnected world. And if you can keep from being selfish, help your neighbors, help your friends, help the person on the street corner. It will make the world such a better place. It'll make you a better person and it'll make your world even better. Helping other people and not being selfish is one of the greatest things that you can do can help you in so many ways. Don't also be self-centered. This is another thing our society keeps telling us. Take pictures of yourself. Always be in the center of attention. Make sure that you're an influencer. But you know what? When we're focused on ourselves, we're losing the ability to actually see ourselves. And it's crazy to think of it that way because how could I lose insight into myself by constantly looking at myself? That's exactly what I need to do. But that's not true. You see yourself in the reflection of the people that you're with, the things that you're doing that have nothing to do with you. It tests your soul. It helps your being. Even if you don't want to do it for other people, Make sure that you avoid self-centeredness for your own good. Don't ignore the future you. It's easy to sit there and think about the things you want today. Like, I want to eat this dessert. I don't want to exercise. I don't want to do that project at work. It's easy to think about what you want right at this moment. But when you think about what you want in the future, I want to be healthier. I want to be thinner. I want to be more athletic. I want to be the boss. You don't get to future you until you change current you who looks to the future and understands what are the next steps they have to take to get to that future you. Don't cross fences when you don't understand what the purpose of the fence is. I see a lot of people in the world who just want to break down all the barriers, break down everything in society, break down everything we have in our lives, in our culture. But what you have to realize is sometimes There are decisions built up that matter. They make a difference in the way our society works, makes a difference in the way you work. Until you understand exactly why fences are put in place for a reason, you should respect where the fence is, learn more about it, and then if it makes sense to remove the fence, metaphorically, then go ahead and do it. To give you a real life example, when I was in Iceland, There were fences all over the place and people would cross over the fence and stand on the edge of glaciers, on the edge of cliffs. And they don't realize that a bunch of people fall off that very cliff all the time. I see it on Facebook. I see it in news groups where people are constantly doing the very thing they're told not to do. It's not just because they didn't understand the danger. They disregarded it entirely. And now for the things you should do advice. How you do one thing is how you do everything. This honestly is one of my favorite pieces of advice because once I learned to have discipline to lose weight, I gained discipline to save money and to clean my house. Learning how I work and how I work the best way possible taught me how to do other things much better than I usually did. That Once you learn that key of how you work, start applying it to other areas of your life so you can have success. The serenity prayer. As you can tell on this podcast, I'm a big fan of it. So here you go. Make sure that you put things into two buckets, things you can change and things that you can't. 
Do things about the things you can change and pray about the things you can't change. Make sure that you're spending more energy enhancing your strengths in life and a little bit of energy bolstering your weaknesses. You will do better in life when you find out what you're great at and make it something that you're amazing at. Live the experimental life. Make small challenges for yourself. Create small experiments. Thinking about getting a restaurant? Go work in a restaurant. Think that you want to buy a dog? Foster a dog for a while. But these little experiments in your life will help you make the best decisions and will give you the experience you need when you actually go after those things. Bikes only go when you're pedaling. Start right away and keep going. This is a reminder that nothing really happens in your life for the good until you start moving. You can sit there and think about dieting. You can read a ton of books about dieting. You can read a ton of books about improving your career or your marriage or your parenting. But until you start doing it, it doesn't matter. So start, even if it's a rocky start, just start. And then once you start, keep progressing, keep going. Without motion in our lives, without action in our lives, nothing happens. Have bandwidth. When I say bandwidth, I mean make sure that you're not booking your time solid, that there's a little bit of flex time in your life because every once in a while, emergencies come up or a friend asks you for help. Or maybe you just feel like taking a super long nap. If you have bandwidth in your life, it'll help you feel less stressed. It'll help you do more fun things and you will not be so stressed out. And when you think about bandwidth, don't just think about time. Think about money too. If you had a little padding of money in your account, so every time your car breaks down, unexpected bill comes along, you are in a panic. Bandwidth will help you when it comes to money as well. So in each type of resource you have in your life, think about how you can create just a bit of bandwidth so that your stress levels can come down and your fun, yes, opportunities can go up. Do the next logical step. Whatever project you're working on, whatever plan you're trying to do, if you're trying to lose weight, figure out what the next most important thing is and then do it. For example, when I was working at the office, the snack room was my biggest danger. If I went in there, and I went in there a lot, right? I needed a stapler. I wanted to talk to someone. Half the time, I would walk out of there with a snack. I realized that me controlling that break room at work was the next step when it came to me doing better. Figure out what that is for you. Whatever is the biggest impact when either it comes to your diet, your exercise, your work, do those things. Take a class, learn whatever it is you need to learn, but take that next logical step. If you've been struggling to find a job or just wish you had another job, one week you just complete your resume. The next week you just look to see what job opportunities are there. Maybe the third week you apply for one of the jobs and you try it out and you see what the interview process is like. Get better at it. Maybe you see that that job wasn't for you. Just keep going with it. Make sure you put everything into perspective. I like to be that person who does put everything into perspective. When I was struggling the hardest through the pandemic, I realized a lot of people had it worse than I did. But then here's the lesson I learned at the end of it. Even if you put everything into perspective, this isn't the worst thing that happened. This isn't something that's really that terrible. But you still have to acknowledge your emotions. Friend told me, that even if you put something in perspective and you realize that it's not the worst in the world, it's not awful, that you still have to respect your feelings and let yourself feel whatever it is you're feeling, even if you have perspective. But putting things in perspective will help you place it in the right type of priority of things that you have to fix in your life. Get help where and when you need it. If that's a trainer at your gym, because you need some accountability and you need some education on your workouts, get that person. If it's mental health that you need, or maybe a counselor to just get you over a bad spot, or maybe you need a career counselor because you don't know which way to go. Don't be afraid to ask for help and make sure you do it when you actually need the help. Sometimes people put off getting help for so long that they could have fixed their lives earlier 
and then grown from that experience and taken off earlier than what they actually did. So don't wait, get help. Try to improve a little bit every day. We talked about that when we discussed James Clear and the Atomic Habits. If you just improve 2% every day, you are so much better at whatever it is you're trying to do. Take in information from everywhere. Rank it based on trust. Live in percentages, not in black and white. So when you see information, you can say, hmm, I think there's a 60% chance that's true. Or maybe that's a 20% chance it's true. But start taking in information, listen to opinions, do some research, and then assign a percentage so you know how much value you place on it. Be a newcomer to everything you do. You want to look at everything in your life with a fresh set of eyes, whether it's your job or how you're doing at home or how you're doing with your kids. If you look at it through the eyes of a newcomer, it'll help you ask some of the questions maybe you're never really asked of yourself. Why is it we eat so much junk food in this house? Why is it that whenever I'm at work, I kind of crash at the end of projects? If you give yourself that newcomer attitude, you'll start asking the good investigation questions. Not only that, when I go to customer sites, I go in there as if I don't know what they're doing, as if I haven't been in this industry for almost 15 years. I try to have them explain to me what it is they're doing, because when they talk and they give me the idea of what they think they're doing, I get a whole new perspective about it. So be a newcomer in everything you do. Over-communicate. A lot of times you think people know what you know, are thinking what you're thinking, or understand why a project was late or why you had troubles with something. But if you over-communicate and tell people, instead of making them read your mind, you'll do a lot better in life because they'll understand where you're coming from and where you're at. Learn and keep learning and then start teaching. Wherever you are in life, there's always opportunities to learn something and keep doing that. Being a lifelong learner will mean that you'll never get stagnant in your life, that things won't get stale, but then it's not good enough to just take in information like a giant sponge. Go show other people. Go help other people. You want to be sensitive. You don't want to help people who don't want to be helped, but where you see the opportunity to help someone, go do that. Maybe it's on Reddit. Maybe it's your best friend. Maybe it's your family, but keep learning and keep teaching. Let others and yourself fail. Not everyone's perfect at everyone. And even if you're really good at something, you will always fail. And you have to remember to let that go, to allow that to happen. It's those times when we fail in life that sometimes give us the best education when it comes to our jobs, when it comes to ourselves. Turn that around as a valuable education. What did I learn from that failure? So you don't beat yourself up about it, but instead you learn from it. And going along with that is forgive yourself. Again, we're not perfect and we'll never be perfect. And the sooner that you can forgive yourself, you can forgive others, the better you'll be, the happier you'll be, and the more willing you'll be to put yourself out there so that you can do more. Be a role model or a mentor or maybe just the person your dog thinks you are. But this will encourage you to do better, to reach for higher goals, to lead the way inside your life, inside your work, and then help other people too. Be balanced most of the time. Sometimes people just get too overcome with either work and then they throw themselves in the work and then they realize they're ignoring their family. So they throw themselves into their family and and then they realize they've been ignoring their friends and then they throw their lives into their friends. It's better to do a little bit of everything, to be balanced. You can diet, but don't give up desserts, but don't eat desserts all the time. Be a good friend, be a good parent, be a good spouse, but try to have a good amount of balance in your life. If you can keep that balance going, you will stay much more grounded and and you'll be there for all the people in your life, like your spouse, your children, your friends, your work, And you won't feel like you're denying anyone anything. Those are my best pieces of advice. I hope you enjoyed them. 
I try to keep this list going because I do read a lot of information from books. I do hear a lot of podcasts and it's hard to sort out exactly what advice you should follow or which advice you should ignore. So while I'm always looking for better advice, better ideas, better way to live my life, I'm also looking for ways of just making sure that I don't do too much, I don't think about too much, and I don't get overwhelmed. This podcast is about small steps. So even if you have really great advice, you can only do so much of it. You can only pay attention to so many things. So pick your list carefully. Some of these pieces of advice were referenced in previous podcasts, and I thought it would get rather annoying if I kept referring to the number. So in the show notes, there will be a list of references either to the advice, like which book it came in, which website it came from, or if I talked about it in a previous podcast. You can find the show notes in your podcatcher application or on my website, smallstepspod.com. So for this, the one-year anniversary of the podcast, I want to thank everyone who has started listening to the podcast. It means so much to me that you're out there listening. And if you ever have anything that you want to say to me, always feel free to email me at jill at smallstepspod.com. And today's entertainment advice comes from Star Trek, The Next Generation. This is Will Wheaton and Ashley Judd. That's law 36. You got to go with what works. What are all these laws that I keep hearing? They're my personal laws. Every time I learn something essential, I make up a law about it so I never forget. How many do you have? 102 so far. And I love this advice, as you know, because I also have my own list of laws, my own list of advice. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Make sure that if you have great ideas or your favorite pieces of advice, you let me know what they are. And you can email them to me at jill at smallstepspod.com. If I get enough good advice from everyone in the crowd, I'll have another podcast where I'll read your advice. With or without names, you decide. <laughs>